Hey, we're going to do unit six test part one with a calculator. So I did the work here and then realized I was not recording it. So let's just talk through it. So K is a constant, find its value, integral from zero to K of a function. And we know it's equal to 18. So I'm going to do the antiderivative of the function, 2K X squared divided by two, the twos cancel out. So I get KX squared and then minus X cubed over three. That's minus one third X cubed. We're evaluating from zero to K. And at the end, we know it's equal to 18. So let's put in the K first. So X squared becomes K squared times K is K cubed minus one third X cubed, which is going to be K cubed. When I put in the zero, that's going to be zero minus zero. That's gone. So one minus one third is two thirds K cubed is equal to 18. Multiply both sides by three halves. Get K cubed equals 27. Take the cube root of both sides. K equals three. So number one is C. Uh, for number two, after being poured into a cup, coffee cools, so the temperature time of T is represented by the function um, T of T, where T is measured in minutes and T of T is measured in degrees Fahrenheit. What is the average temperature? So I'm going to find the average value of the function over the first four minutes. So it's the integral from zero to four of T of T dT um, and then all over one over four. So let's actually put this into... Um, our calculator, so math, number nine. So I'm going to go from zero to four. And then I'm going to put in the function. So the four show up. I did not put in the four. Enter. Oh, and if it's frozen, that's going to change what we're doing here. All right, well, let me skip this for right now. I don't know why that's frozen. Just working a little while ago. Okay, so we have, um, it, all you gotta do is put in your calculator and then when you get that final answer, it's one over four minus zero. And then that's gonna give us um, what the average value of the function is. And it comes out to, I believe this 117, okay? So let me see if I get that to work right now. Zero, four, nope. Not working. All right. Um, let's take a look at number three. Which of the following integrals is or are true if f of x is a differentiable function on the open interval, a to b, and c is on the open interval from a to b? So I know when I go from a to c, that equals 6, and from c to b, that equals negative 2. So if I'm going from a to b, that's just this one, A to C, 6, plus this one, C to B, that's negative 2, 6 plus negative 2. So this one works. Let's make sure we can see that. So now this says, well, what if I take one-third of C to A? Okay, well, one-third C to A is the same as 1 factor out one-third. Let's change this from A to C. I'm going to make that negative, and this equals 6, so that's going to be negative 6, and one-third of it will be negative 2. Okay, is that equal to C to B? Why, yes, it does. That equals negative 2, because this part from B to C, A to C, excuse me, 6, but then I take negative part of that, and that's going to be negative 6, and then a third of it's negative 2. And this one, um, B to A... So it's just me switching A to B around. We just said A to B is 4. So when I do this, A to B is equal to 4. So because I switch those around, that's going to be negative 4. And when I factor out that 2, I got to multiply this side by 2, and that would be negative 8. So negative 8 is not equal to 9. Okay, so our answer for number three should be A, right? That's a challenging one. Even though we have access to our calculator, nothing we can do there. Okay, here, this is just another calculator problem. Time equals zero. Water begins leaking from a tank at the rate of L of T. And again, very complicated looking problem. We just need to put that into this integral problem, the integral from zero to five of L T D T. So we just got to type that in. Let me see if I can get my calculator to work at all. Nope, not going to work. Um, and then that's going to spit out our answer. Number four 
should come out to be D. Okay. Number five, graph to the right, represents the rate at which people arrive at amusement park ride throughout the day, where T is measured in hours from the time the ride begins operation. If there were 275 people in line when the ride begins operation, how many people have waited in line after four hours? So I need to find the area under the curve from zero to four, and then that's going to give me how many people went through, and because that's the rate at which people arrive, and this is just going to be the total amount of people. And then we're going to, they started with 275. So I'm just going to add that to whatever value I get. So, and let's, let's try to do that. So this first part, if I treat this like a trapezoid, that's a thousand, one half, um, a thousand plus, I hope I got to write it with a pen, a thousand plus 10 hundred. 1,100, 1,200, and then this is two right here, okay, and that's going to be 2,200, and we'll just leave that at 2,200. The second one, same thing, has a base of two or a height of two, and then this is one half, the sum of the bases, 1,200 plus 400. And we already said that's times two, two times half there. So 1,600. So I'm at 3,800. So I know I'm going to be more than A. So I know right now my answer is going to be D. Let's check this last. Oh, wait, that's all I had to do was um, 0 to 4. Oh, sorry. So I know 3,800 plus the 275 is going to give me the 4,075. Okay. <clears throat> So just conceptually understanding what the question is asking us. Right? And if it's a really challenging function, they're going to allow us to um, use our calculator. Okay, here, use right Riemann sum over the given intervals, estimate interval 5 to 35. So I'm planning on doing 1, 2, 3, 4. So the integral from 5 to 35 of f of t dt. And 5 to 13 is 8, but then I'm going to use the right side. 8 times 12 is 96. 13 to 22 is 9. The right-hand side is 13. 90 and 27 is 117. 22 to 27 is 5. Use the right-hand side, 17, 50, and 35 is 85. And lastly, 27 to 35 is 8. Use the right-hand side, 22. Um, 160 plus 16 is 176. Use our calculator, add these up, and we should get uh, D, 474. Let me just confirm that. 200, 280, 380, 450, 461, 468, 474. Perfect. That's what we were looking for. All right, last multiple choice of the first part. And now we got at 10 a.m. temperature at a ski resort increase, causing the snow to begin to melt at a rate defined by the equation M of T. M of T, think of melt. Okay, so... Um, and that's 10 plus 8 cosine t over 3. If there are 178 cubic yards of snow at, the, at that point, how much snow remains at 5 p.m.? And again, our initial time is 10, so we have to pay attention there. If there are 178 cubic yards, um, how much snow remains at 5 p.m.? If no additional snow has been added and the temperature has continually increased throughout the day, okay? Okay. Um, and let's look at, so what are we going to do here? And they gave us that problem. Um, and I think it's hours since 10 a.m. So we are going from zero and then to get to 5 p.m. That's seven hours later. And we're doing M of T. DT, that's how much 
snow begins to melt. And so I start with 178 and I'm going to subtract how much snow melts over those seven hours. Okay, so we got to keep in context like what our initial amount was and then what this function means. It's melting, so it's going to take away from the total amount of cubic yards. And the nice thing is I can do this on the calculator. Not now I can't. But normally, so um, again, we would just put that into the calculator and we will look at this during the week if we still have questions on that or during W2. But the answer for number seven should end up being A. And that's a calculator based problem. Okay. All right. Um, let's take a look at this problem. So, the rate at which people enter an amusement park is modeled by a function e defined by e of t so that's enter and again a, a complex function not something you can do in your head we have access to the calculator when people leave the amusement park that's l of t both e of t and l of t are measured in people per hour and time is measured in number of hours after midnight that's important so that's 9 a.m is nine hours after midnight 23 is 23 hours after midnight, which is 11 p.m. At time equals nine, there are no people in the park. So we start with zero people. That's the initial amount. The price for the admission um, to the park is $15. After 5 p.m., the price of admission to the park is $11. How many dollars are collected? Okay, well, we have two things. So from when it opens, 9 a.m. till 5, which will be 17 hours after midnight, we're going to have people entering the park, and this will give us the total people that enter the park, but then I need to multiply that by 15. Now, at 5 p.m., it changes. Tickets are now 11 bucks. The total, of total amount of people entering the park is going to be from 17, so it goes to 11 p.m. So those last six hours are represented by 17, which is 5 p.m., that's 17 hours after midnight, all the way to 23, which is 11 p.m. And again, the nice thing is they give us this function for E of T. I would just put it in the calculator. And this is the first time where, hey, this gives us the total amount of total amount of people entering from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., but then I got to multiply each of those by 15. And then this is the people that enter from... 5 p.m. to 11 p.m., but I multiply by 11 because the ticket costs change. And we should get 104,048. So just make sure you can do that on your calculator and get that to work. If not, we'll have to go over that. Okay, let's take a look at part B. Let H of T equals the integral from 9 to T of E of T minus L of T. Find the values of h of 17 and h prime of 17. Explain using correct units the meaning of both values in the context of the park. Well, we have this whole thing, and the nice thing is they tell us what e of t is, they tell us what l of t is, and when they say to find h of 17, what I'm doing is I'm finding the total number of people from 9 a.m. to 17. What does that represent? 17, we just said, was 5 p.m. This is how many total number of people that entered and then the total number of people that have left. Okay, and now 17 hours after midnight is 5 p.m. So when I get this, I'm going to know, hey, H of 17, I'm going to put this into my calculator. It's a little, a little more complicated and I should get 3,725 people in the park. It's not the total people that went into the park because it also is accounting for people that are leaving. And this is just at 5 p.m. Okay, so please make sure you can put that into your calculator and get that. Ooh, I was almost going to skip to the next part. Now, H prime of 17. Hey, when I take the derivative of this, it's going to just B of the integral. So now 
h prime of 17 is just e of 17 minus, no, not derivative of e, because it's just take the derivative of this and that's going to offset the integral. So it's going to be e of 17 minus l of 17. And this is going to represent the rate of change of the number of people that are coming in and out of the park at 17 hours. So, and I probably should have written this first, h prime of t equals just e of t minus l of t. So it's at the 17th hour, what's going on here? And when I put this into my calculator, I get negative 380.281 people per hour. Okay, and now um, what does that mean? It means um, that the number of people in the park is decreasing by 380 people per hour at 5 p.m. Okay, so it's decreasing by 380 people per hour at 5 p.m. All right, let's go on to part C. Um, during the park, during the hours that the park is open from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m., what is the maximum number of people? Well, remember the EVT, extreme value theorem. So, oops, writing on the wrong thing. So using the EVT, I know my extreme values are going to occur at 9 and then also at 23, and I want to find out, hey, when is when is a potential max or min going to occur? So I got to look at this. I got to say, hey, when is the rate of change, which we just said that's equal to E of T minus L of T, when is this rate of change equal to zero? Okay, so I'm really trying to find out when is E of T equal to L of T. And again, I'm not going to be able to get it on my calculator, but I find out that that is, and hopefully you can, time equals 15.794. Okay. And then once I know my endpoints of the interval and any places of potential min or max when the derivative is zero undefined, that's where the values of max and mins, the extreme values will occur. So we said, hey, when I put nine in, I'm going to get zero. When I put in 23, I'm going from nine to 23, and I'm going to use my calculator for this, of E of T minus L of T. So you already have all this in, and hopefully this is all calculator work here. And now when I put in same thing here, now I got to put in, I'm going from nine to 15.794. Um, and when I put that in, E of T minus L of T, this is where you want to be able to copy what's already there. We get 3,950.6 so that shows us the maximum number of people at the given time is 3,950 or 3,951. 3,950, usually the APs, College Board's really nice at, when you're talking people or dogs or something like that, they, they understand you're either gonna round down or round up, okay? And that was worth nine points, two points for the first part, four part, points for the second part and then three points for that last part. Okay, so let me save this one. We'll put that everywhere and then we'll do part two.